Before long, I'll be dead. And you. And your brother. And your sister. And all of her children. It's the family name that lives on. It's all that lives on. Tywin is a calculating, intelligent, politically astute, ruthless, and controlling man. He dedicates his life and efforts towards maintaining the Lannisters' prestige and ensuring House Lannister is respected, or at the very least feared. A proven battle commander, Tywin prefers to lead from the rear. Despite this, he has a powerful presence and is renowned for his intimidating gaze. According to his sister, Tywin mistrusts laughter because of how his father, Lord Titus, has been laughed at. Grandmaster Pycelle was amazed that his late wife, Joanna, was able to make him laugh three separate times. Tywin was the firstborn of Titus Lannister and J.N. Marbrand. When Lord Titus agreed to marry Tywin's sister, Jenna, to Emmon Frey, the second son of Lord Walder Frey, to please the Lord of the Crossing, Roger Rain left the hall in anger, and Ellen Rain laughed aloud. Only the ten-year-old Tywin spoke out against the wedding because he thought it was an uneven match. This would be the beginning of the many missteps that Tywin would see his father make. Much of Tywin's life would be dedicated to regaining the prestige his father had lost his family. Shortly after that incident, Titus sent Tywin to King's Landing to serve as royal page and cupbearer at King Aegon V Targaryen's court, where Tywin befriended the young prince Aerys Targaryen and Stephen Baratheon, the heir to Storm's End. Tywin's cousin, Joanna Lannister, also served at the royal court as companion and lady-in-waiting to Princess Rhaelia Targaryen since 259 AC. One year later, during the War of the Nine Penny Kings, 11,000 Westermen, under the leadership of Tywin's uncle, Sir Jason Lannister, were sent to fight beside the other forces of the Iron Throne in the Stepstones. Tywin, who was already a knight at this time, joined the Lannister force, as did his brothers, Kevin and Tygett, as squires. The young Prince Aerys served as a squire during the war, and when he won his knighthood, Tywin was granted the honor of knighting his friend. Lord Robert Rain, the Lord of Castamere, was successful in arranging a betrothal between his daughter Ellen and Tywald Lannister, the heir of Lord Gerald Lannister of Casterly Rock. However, both Ellen's betrothed and father were slain during the Peak Uprising in 233 AC. Ellen, strong-willed and hot-tempered, was not willing to give up her dream of becoming Lady of Casterly Rock, something which she had been anticipating for years. She convinced Lord Gerald's second son, Tyon, to break his betrothal and marry her in Instead. In this, she was successful. Ellen and Tyon were wed in 235 AC, causing Ellen to become the Lady of Casterly Rock in all but name, as Lord Gerald was widowed. Ellen used her position to support her own family. In 236 AC, she became a widow when Tyon died in the Fourth Blackfire Rebellion. Ellen's influence dwindled as Lord Gerald assumed more control over Casterly Rock and began to prepare his younger son Titus for his future lordship. When Gerald died in 244 AC, Titus became the Lord of Casterly Rock and the Warden of the West. Titus desired to be loved, and as such, was willing to forgive people quickly. To understand how Tywin would deal with the rebellion of the Reigns and the Tarbex, we must first understand how the rebellion started. Lord Titus Lannister was a weak ruler who was taken advantage of by his bannermen. After repeatedly witnessing the weakness of Lord Titus and realizing the Laughing Lion had neither teeth nor claws, the vassal houses of Reign and Tarbeck requested lavish loans, which Titus granted. Through her brothers, Lady Ellen borrowed gold from House Lannister, which she used to restore the crumbling Tarbeck Hall. When asked to repay these, they merely laughed, and soon enough, Titus was laughing with them. Tywin, however, was not laughing. Tywin and his brothers sought to restore the prestige of House Lannister. After their return from the Stepstones, Titus protested feebly before returning to his mistress. Tywin demanded the repayment of the gold his father had lent out and those who could not repay immediately had to send a hostage to Casterly Rock until their debt was settled. Sir Kevin Lannister was given command of 500 veteran knights, tasked with ridding the Westerlands of robber knights and outlaws. Sir Harry Swift, the knight of the cornfield, surrendered his daughter Dorna into Kevin's custody, but Roger Rain, Ellen's older brother, reportedly laughed at Tywin's edicts. When Lord Walder and Tarbeck rode to confront Titus at Casterly Rock, he was met with Tywin instead. The young Tywin 
Tywin ordered Walderin imprisoned for disloyalty, Walderin's wife Ellen responded by seizing Tywin's cousin, Stafford, and two Lannisters of Lannisport. Before anything came of this situation, Lord Titus ordered the hostages to be exchanged and forgave House Tarbeck's debt to House Lannister. While this settled things for the moment, Tywin would remember the slight, the debt, and his revenge. Late in 261 AC, Tywin provoked House Rain and Tarbeck by ordering that Roger and Walderin appear at Casterly Rock to answer for their crimes. Tywin knew they would not come, and when the accused instead renounced their allegiance to House Lannister, Tywin used this as the justification to raise an army without his lordly father's leave. Tywin marched on Walderin in battle. Because the Lannisters marched on Tarbeck Hall so suddenly, Lord Walderin had no time to rally his banners. As such, he met the Lannister host in battle with only his household knights. A short, bloody battle ensued, in which the Tarbecks were butchered and Tarbeck Hall was destroyed, with Lady Ellen dying in its collapse. The heads of Walderin and his sons were impaled on spears surrounding the castle. Lord Roger Rain of Castamere arrived with 2,000 hastily gathered men. After an exhausting march, they arrived in time to witness Tarbeck Hall aflame. Most reports claim the Lannisters had three times as many men as the Reigns. Roger hoped that surprise would give him the advantage and sounded the attack. The Lannister army was quick to recover from the first shock, and when the high numbers of the Lannisters began to tell, Lord Roger saw no other option than to flee. Losing over half his forces, he would flee back to Castamere, wounded by a crossbow bolt between the shoulders. With Lord Roger feverish and weak due to his injuries, his younger brother, Reynard Rain, assumed command of the remaining Rain forces. The Rains took refuge at Castamere, and Reynard led all his men down into the mines of the castle. Instead of waiting for the subterranean castle to surrender, Tywin ordered his men to seal the entrances of the mines. When all entrances were blocked with tons of stone, earth, and soil, leaving no way in or out, Tywin had his men dam a nearby stream and divert it to the nearest entrance of the mine. Water easily found its way through the tiny gaps in the rubble that blocked the mouth of the entrance. Lannister men stationed at the most distant entrances claimed they could hear faint screaming and shouting, but by daybreak, there was nothing but silence. None of the 300 men, women, and children within ever emerged from the mines again. As commanded by Tywin, the castle on the surface was set ablaze. The ruined castles were left as reminders of the fate that awaited those who scorned the power of Casterly Rock, and the reigns of Castamere was a song written as a tribute, immortalizing the event and giving a darker meaning to the common phrase, a Lannister always pays his debts which originally referred solely to the Lannisters' vast fortune. When Lord Farman of Fair Castle grew truculent years later, Tywin had an envoy perform the song with a lute. Lord Farman caused no further trouble after hearing the message. This gives us an idea of Tywin's ruthless, practical, and cunning temperament, which we see more of during his actions in Robert's Rebellion. Tywin married his cousin, Joanna Lannister, and their first children were the fraternal twins, Cersei and Jaime. When Jaime was diagnosed with a learning difficulty by a maester who predicted that he would never read, Tywin sat with his son for hours a day until he overcame his problems with transponding letters in his mind, much to Jaime's resentment. Joanna died after giving birth to Tyrion, which Tywin has blamed his son for ever since. It is said that the best part of Tywin died with her. He never remarried. Tywin strongly resents Tyrion for Joanna's death. When Tywin discovered that the young Tyrion had secretly eloped and married Tysha, a peasant's daughter, he had Tyrion's marriage forcefully annulled, revealing to him that the entire love affair was a plot by Jaime and him to get Tyrion to lose his virginity, his love being nothing more than a hired prostitute. Tywin then had his guards defile Tysha in front of Tyrion and force Tyrion to do so last. Tyrion's hatred of Tywin has been reciprocated ever since. When Ares II Targaryen became king of Westeros, he appointed Tywin, his old friend, as Hand of the King, a position regarded as deputy and second in command to the king, making Tywin the second most powerful man in the realm. Over the years, as Ares became increasingly paranoid, he stopped trusting in Tywin, believing him to have become too powerful. Because of this, he appointed his son Jaime as Kingsguard, normally a highly coveted position, as it was a designation of great honor, Kingsguard knights may not marry. This means 
means Ares effectively robbed Tywin of his preferred heir. Ares also rejected Tywin's proposal to marry Cersei to his own son, Rhaegar. Thereafter, Tywin resigned as Hand of the King and returned to his seat at Casterly Rock. During Robert's rebellion against the Mad King, Tywin remained neutral, answering neither the summons of the King nor the calls from the rebels, until the Battle of the Trident, after which it became clear that the rebels would win. Tywin marched with the full power of Casterly Rock to the capital, feigning that he had come to defend it from the rebellion. Harry's advisors urged the king not to trust Tywin, even Jaime Lannister, Tywin's own son, who knew his father would never back the losing side in a war. Nevertheless, on Maester Pycelle's advice, the gates were opened to the massive Lannister army of 10,000 soldiers who began the slaughter. Tywin ordered the city to be taken, and the royal family murdered in a ruthless and efficient manner. As a result, the city was sacked and the royal family massacred by Sir Gregor Clegane. Gregor, referred to as the Mountain due to his enormous size, slew the family of the same prince who knighted him. Upon seeing Tywin's betrayal, Ares ordered Jaime to bring him Tywin's head and instructed his royal pyromancer, Rossart, to set King's Landing ablaze. Jaime responded by personally stabbing the Mad King in the back then slitting his throat, thereby betraying his vow to protect the king. When Robert Baratheon and Eddard Stark reached the Red Keep, Tywin presented the bodies of the royal family as proof of his allegiance. After the rebellion, Robert Baratheon took the throne and married Tywin's daughter Cersei to cement the alliance between their houses. Robert also pardoned Jaime and allowed him to continue his service as a member of the Kingsguard. Tywin returned to Casterly Rock, where he continued to serve as Warden of the West. Cersei gave birth to three children, Joffrey, Marcella, and Tommen Baratheon. All three children are the product of her incestuous relationship with Jaime. This was discovered by both John Arryn and Eddard Stark albeit independently, and meant that Joffrey, the oldest of the Baratheon children and heir apparent to the Iron Throne, had no actual claim to it. In 289 AC, Balon Greyjoy, Lord of the Iron Islands, began the Greyjoy Rebellion against King Robert through the burning of the Lannister fleet anchored at Lannisport. After the defeat of the Greyjoys, Tywin rebuilt his fleet with the Lannister's immense fortune. While the new King Robert was exceptional at war, as he had shown in putting down the Greyjoy Rebellion, his management of the realm was subpar. Due to Robert's financial mismanagement of the realm, as well as his own new connection to the throne by marriage, Lord Tywin frequently lent money to the crown, placing the court in King's Landing in debt of over three million golden dragons to House Lannister. There has been much thought to the idea whether Tywin is good or evil. While it is a hard stretch to say that Tywin is a moral paragon, there are several arguments that he is not objectively evil, which we will explore. Tywin is a man who has had much taken from him, his family's prestige and his wife being paramount. One, he was able to recover, the other, not so. He desperately clings to his family's power, perhaps traumatized believing he could not get it back if lost again, like his wife. However, this has become contorted over time. Tywin does not care about his family, but the idea of his family, the family name. He is actually willing to sacrifice his family, namely Tyrion, to maintain the Lannister's prestige. Tywin's hatred for those that have taken something from him is boundless, as we can see in his disregard for Tyrion and his order of the brutal murder of the Mad King's family by Gregor Clegane. The Mad King Ares was a man whom Tywin was friends with since childhood. He did not hesitate to have his family executed. Whether Tywin was always a brutal man and unforgiving is hard to say, but certainly, after the death of his wife, he lost what sympathy he had. Perhaps Tywin was a cold man, born into a hard time, forced into cruelty to further the survival of his house. Perhaps he would have been cruel no matter what era he was born in. On this we can only speculate. Whether Tywin is a heartless psychopath, or merely a man driven to brutality from his circumstances, is something we have to decide for ourselves.